Welcome to Thoroughbred Action from Gulfstream Park. I'm your host, Ron Nicoletti. I'm here with the meet's leading rider, Javier Castellano. We're going to talk to him in a moment, but let's look at those track and weather conditions. The main track good. The turf course listed as firm. The first race on the turf, five furlongs, made and claim as fillies and mares, three-year-olds and upward. We'll have eight runners in this field. They're at the post. And they're off. A nice beginning into firing up for that early lead. That is Artemisa. The long shot kicks it into gear early. Chunky, please. Dead at the inside to come away in a second. Starship Arena is out of that uh, third spot. Currently four links off the lead. Down at the inside, Big Wave Dave. Gave out into fifth with Telepresselli alongside as they move on to that uh, far turn. Artemisa. Maintaining a length and advantage from um, Chunky Please, who was up on the outside. Big Wave Dave is uh, back in as they uh, move around that far turn. Artemisa has the lead. Chunky Please is there in a second. Moving up at the outside, Starship Arena. And those three have broken clear as they turn for home. It's Artemisa, who's still up top with Chunky Please giving chase. Starship Arena is a third. Final furlong. Artemisa looking to take them all the way. Chunky Please still second with Starship Arena. Third deep stretch now. It's Artemisa. Artemisa is going to take the opener. Chunky Please was second. Starship Arena finished in the third. Final thoughts was fourth. Number seven, Artemisa closes and scores and pays $14.20. Owned by Vincente Stella Stables, LLC. Trained by Antonio Sano and ridden to victory today by Tyler Gaffleone. Second race, a seven furlong event. These are maiden claimers, three-year-olds and upwards. Scratch number four, Dunn Hall. They are at the post. And they're off. High dandy with a flying start on the outside. Insurance premium also came out to well as they entered the main stretch. Shatito joins the top pair dead at the inside from a third. Meta Hude is just behind the top trio from a fourth. Up the back stretch they roll. It is, uh, they enter the uh, Main stretch there to Chetito down at the inside with a short lead. Insurance premium, the first time a starter is hanging right with him in the second spot. High Dandy is a three wide third as Metahude continues to move up in between horses. Lucky Warriors dead at the inside of fifth. Great fan of the favorite, just four lengths off the lead right down the sixth spot at hard labor is the trailer just a five lengths front to back as they move on to the far turn and Chetito. Still with a short lead dead at the inside from Insurance Premium. Mita Hude continues to move up around that uh, turn. High Dandy still three wide at the fourth spot with a lucky warrior. Saving ground dead at the inside. Gray Phantom begins to uh, find his best drive, but he's up at the outside still with four lengths to make up. The half mile was 47 seconds. They turn for home. Insurance Premium is beginning to rise. Go figure. It's Insurance Premium who takes the lead. Shatito is full out down at the inside a second, but Ahune is a third. Hard labor to the fourth spot. Deep stretch. Insurance Premium at his career debut. It's Insurance Premium who was a dominant. A sharp effort here from Insurance Premium. Tight photo for place between hard labor and Mitahune. 124 and 4. It was first time starter number seven, Insurance Premium, winning it for owner Frank Call. Calabrese trained by Mike Petro and ridden to victory today by Elvis Trajillo. We'll take a short break. When we come back, we'll have race number three. Welcome back, third race, a one mile event, allowance optional claim of four three-year-olds, scratch the number one, Golden Ray. With the scratch, there was no show, trifecta or superfecta wagering. They're at the post. And they're off. Prospectus out quickly, dead at the inside, sharp as Tekka. Floating out there in the four outside, Dunkirk's boy also moving up. As they race out of that uh, back chute and enter the main stretch, it's a Dunkirk's boy. 
there at the inside with the sharp Azteca. Those two race against a team. They're currently a three lengths clear of Lazarus Project, who's up on the outside of third prospectus, saving ground as the trailer. They reach the opening quarter in 24 seconds. It's a Dunkirk's boy dead at the inside. Remains under steady pressure from Sharp Azteca as the field races up the uh, back stretch. And uh, those two continue to uh, match strides as they uh, race towards that uh, far turn. Prospectus dead at the inside in uh, third with the Lazarus Project alongside. They were past the half mile marker in 47 and to one. And they move on to the uh, far turn. It's Dunkirk's boy still there at the inside. Sharp Azteca. Those two continuing to uh, slug it out. Prospectus there at the inside of third with Lazarus Project moving up. Time to come back. Group around that uh, far turn. The uh, favorite to Sharp Azteca. Still all business here. Three to five. Lazarus Project moving up down to the uh, second spot. Prospectus saving ground with a quarter of a mile left to run. And it's Sharp Azteca dead at the inside. Lazarus Project is uh, there in second. Prospectus saves ground into the uh, third spot. Spot. Sharp Azteca driven out here. Edgar uh, Zayas uh, aboard a four length lead down for Sharp Azteca as they are through the uh, stretch. Lazarus Project giving chase in the second. Respect us third, but it's Sharp Azteca. Sharp again today. Back to back for Sharp Azteca. Lazarus Project finished second. Prospectus was third. Number five, Sharp Azteca looks sharp during the stretch run and draws off to win and pay $3.20. Owned by Gelfenstein Farm, LLC. Trained by George Navarro and ridden to victory today by Edgar Zayas. Fourth race, one mile and one sixteenth on the turf. These are maiden claimers, fillies and mares, three-year-olds and up with scratch the number three, Aka La Rentia. And note the jockey on the two is Nick Juarez. And they're off. Havadagita, away to a quick beginning with the killer bird. Could be getting that to second spot. Voices only is down at the inside of race in a third. Desert Princess is in between horses in a fourth. Princess Moon wide in that opening turn from a fifth. And at the back, Annie O'Shiller is Havadagita. Is loose on the lead around that opening turn. Havadagita is two lengths clear of killer bird with voices only. There in the third spot, Desert Princess is a fourth, currently four lengths off the lead. Up at the outside, that's Princess Moon from fifth, and Eddie O'Shiller continues to trail the pack. They were past the opening quarter, 25 and one. And up the back stretch, it's the long shot Hava Nagita, who's maintaining a length advantage from Killer Bird, who's just off that early tempo from a second. Desert Princess is uh, there in a third with voices only. Down at the inside in a fourth. Princess Moon up at the outside of fifth. Currently five links off the lead. Eddie O'Shiller continues to trail the pack. The half mile is up in a 49 into three. And it's Hava Nagita who remains under steady pressure from a killer bird. Desert Princess is up at the outside of third with voices only. Down at the rail in the fourth, Princess Moon and Eddie O'Shiller still at the back. Time to come back group around that uh, far turn. Hava Nagita, they begin to uh, swarm in. Killer Bird now strikes the uh, top. And moving wide, that's Princess Moon with a late bid. Three quarters win one, 14 and a two. Killer Bird with a short lead. Here's Princess Moon who's rallying up on the outside. Desert Princess in between rivals as they come to the uh, finish. Killer Bird still maintaining a short lead. Princess Moon giving chase to the outside. A second, Desert Princess a third, but it's Killer Bird. Killer Bird will strike here. Five to one. Princess Moon finished in a second. Desert Princess was a third. Eddie O'Shiller finished fourth. Number two, Killer Bird wins it. Pays thirteen dollars and eighty cents. Owned by Taconic Racing Stable LLC. Charles Simon and Gary Marsh, trained by Chuck Simon, and ridden to victory today by Nick Juarez. We're going to take a short break, and when we come back, we'll have race number five. early preparing for the task ahead focused on a single goal then it's showtime ready to face another challenge and while victory may be uncertain 
you can always bet on us to be at our very best. Welcome back to Fifth Race. One mile and one-sixteenth on the turf. It's an allowance optional claim of fillies and mares. Four-year-olds and upward. Scratch the three. Who's that chick? Also scratch number nine, Indy Gita. And note the jockey on the eight is Elvis Trujillo. They're all the nine. And they're at the post. And they're off. Rhythm Queen. Bolting out the early lead. One Liz. To her outside, those two together with the um, flying tippet up at the outside from a third. Ice Festival is traveling in between horses in a fourth. Dunn one's dead at the inside, a fifth in front of a fleet Mary. And at the back, Foolish Ways as the field moves out of that opening turn. And up top, one Liz has taken over the early lead from a Rhythm Queen, who's there at the inside in a second. Flying tippet. Now just uh, off that top pair from a third ice festival. It's currently three lengths off the lead from a fourth. Dunn one's dead at the inside of fifth with a foolish ways. Up on the outside, the Trevor of Fleet and Mary. As they race at the back stretch, they're past the opening the quarter, 24 and two. The half mile was up in 50 and three, and it's one Liz who has maintained a two-length advantage up the uh, back stretch. Flying Tippet is there between horses from a second. Rhythm Queen dead at the inside from a third ice festival. Begins to move up down the uh, fourth spot. In between horses, Dunn, one is fifth. Foolish Ways is a three wide around the uh, turn from a sixth. And a Fleet Mary is trailed throughout as they race around that uh, far turn. One Liz now under heavy pressure from Flying Tippet. Ice Festival is making a three wide bid. Here's a Foolish Ways who's moving up uh, wide around that turn. Three quarters, one fifteen and three. One Liz still a short lead. Flying Tippet bearing down to the outside. Ice Festival is down the center of the track. Rhythm Queen trying to thread through rivals late. Foolish ways up at the far outside. It's Flying Tippet who's taken over with a short lead and deep stretch. Here's Flying Tippet. Ice Festival edging closer, but it's Flying Tippet to win. A photo for place between Ice Festival and Foolish Ways. Number seven, Flying Tippet wins. Pays a very nice $18.60. Owned by Frank L. Jones Jr. and trained by the red hot trainer Dale Romans. Ridden to victory today by Jose Lescano. Sixth race, a one-mile claiming event for four-year-olds and upward will have eight runners in the field. And uh, they're off. It was a nice beginning for Amber Jack up on the outside. I'm stepping it up. Moves on through dead at the inside with Brown Almighty. And I'm stepping it up. Willie Burge with the early lead. Seffy is uh, looking to mix it up early. Maritime Pulpit is up on the outside in third. Amber Jack is in between horses from a fourth. Brown Almighty stood at the inside as they are through an opening split of 24 seconds. Thundergram is back at the sixth spot. And he has two beaten your dreams or mine in the Tinto Mesa. As the field races up the back stretch and towards the far turn, I'm stepping it up into Paco Lopez. Holding down the lead. Sevy is up on the outside in a second. Brown Almighty down at the rail from a third. Now just a two and a half links off the lead. The half mile was up in 46 and four. And they move on to the far turn. I'm stepping it up. Still there. Sevy remains on the outside in second. A length off the lead. Brown Almighty saving ground into a third. Your dreams or mine. Now begins to pick up the pace. And he moves a three wide from a fourth. Maritime Pulpit needs to pick it up in a fifth. Amber Jack is saving ground as they are rolled around that uh, far turn. Brown Almighty is up to engage. I'm stepping it up. Three quarters, one, 11 and a two. And it's Brown Almighty who takes over with a less than a quarter of a mile to race. I'm stepping it up is uh, fading now back to a second. Your dreams or mine is up on the outside of third. Amber Jack has late run up the inside, but Brown Almighty is out for a Sunday afternoon stroll. He is diving it here. It's Brown Almighty at 10 to one. Tight photo for place between Amber Jack dead at the inside. Your dreams are mine on the outside. I'm stepping it up, finished fourth. Maritime Pulpit was fifth. Number two, Brown Almighty. Wow, a nice performance. Draws off to win. It pays $22.80. Owned by LV Stables, LLC. Trained by Peter Walder. And that gives jockey Edgar Zayas his second win today. We're going to take another break. And when we come back, we'll have the first half of the late Daily Double.
Welcome back. The seventh race, seven furlongs and allowance optional claim of four-year-olds and up of which have never won three races or a claiming price of $35,000. The ninth to five favorite currently is the number nine, Goombe Dancer. And uh, they're off. Royal Squeeze was out quickly in the center of the track, Goombe Dancer. The uh, favorite also moving up with the Grive on at the inside. They are three across as they race at the back stretch. Capital City was out of the fourth position with Face of Winter. Now up in between horses, Ron McLeod to his inside. More applause is out of the rail from a fifth. Best Bard is in the sixth spot, and Star Contender will have to do it from last. The opening quarter was 22 and a four. And it's Royal Squeeze, who's maintaining a short lead. The favorite Gumba Dancer is just off that lead in a second, and a neck behind. With more applause, down at the inside of third, Grive on is in between horses in tight traffic from a fourth. Rod McLeod is a three wide of the fifth spot with the best Bard moving up. The half mile was up in 45 and a four. Royal Squeeze continues to carry the mail around the far turn. Gumbe Dancer down, dials up the pressure of the outside in the second. Best Bard is into the third spot. More applause trying to pick up his game down at the inside. They turn for home and it's Gumbe Dancer who is alongside Royal Squeeze. Those two continue to throw down and to slug it out. Three quarters, one ten and two. It's Gumbe Dancer who now edges a clear and deep stretch. Grive Vaughn is moving up into the second spot. Royal Squeeze third. It's Gumbe Dancer to win. Grivon finished second. Royal Squeeze was a third. Face of Wetter finished fourth. Number nine, Gumbe Dancer wins it for owner J.F. Young, trained by George Navarro and ridden to victory today by Paco Lopez. The eighth and final race, five furlongs on the turf. Claim is Phillies and Mares, three-year-olds and upward. We're going to have eight runners going to the post in the nightcap. And they're off. Far from here. Blasted out from the far outside, Cat and Dog. Now moves up those two together as they race up the back stretch. Red Aguia came out racing in a third. Talitha Coob is uh, currently four wide in the fourth spot. Three lengths off the lead. Ghost of Anapa moves up in a fourth. Like a charm in between horses from a fifth. Just give me a kiss next in line. Sixth in front of Olympic a Smoke as they move on to the far turn. The opening split 21 into four. Far from here is upset minded in between horses. Red Agia is uh, now alongside as they race around that uh, far turn. Talitha Coombe is into a third. And as they hit the top of the stretch here in the end finale, it's Far from here, still maintaining a short lead. Red Aguia is down the center of the track. Ghost of Anapa into the third spot. Far outside, Olympic smoke from way downtown. Deep stretch, far from here, still with a short lead. Ghost of Anapa trying to track him down. It's Ghost of Anapa who is up to take the finale. A blanket finish for the Miners. Look like Olympic smoke at the far outside for second. Running time, 57-3. And that wraps up the championship meet. I'm here, as I mentioned, with Javier Castellano. Another winning season for you. How was it? It was great, Ryan. Um, I really appreciate it. I enjoy my moment. And I have a lot of support. I'm very lucky to be here to participate with the best jock in the country. And it could be better, you know. I can't I can ask it better than that. You know, South Florida, we have great weather, great meet. Um, a lot of fans, they can over here. I know the leading jockey season, so that's going to be my fifth year in the role. <laughs> as great as she me, and very thankful for that. The best thing about it, he'll be back next year for number, how do you do that? Six. That's six. it, six. Good night, good luck.